All right, let's pick up where we left off. So we're still gonna use implicit differentiation, but look what we have to find now. We have to find the second derivative of this equation right here. So if we want the second derivative, we need to find the first derivative. So let's go through it. So 2x plus 2y times dy dx is equal to zero. So let's solve for the dy dx. So we'll subtract the 2x over and then we're gonna divide by 2y. So the twos cancel out. And so we end up with negative x all over y. So there's your first derivative. So now I can get the second derivative By you guessed it, we got to use the quotient rule because we have a quotient. Okay, so the derivative of the top is negative 1 times the bottom. And then minus uh, the top times the derivative of the denominator, which would be dy dx all over y squared. So we need to simplify that out. So we need, or we have negative y, the minus and the minus become a positive. And then the dy dx, like we don't wanna have the second derivative in terms of the first derivative. In terms of x and y are fine, but not, like you don't want embedded derivatives in there. So we need to substitute it out. And I can do that because I know what dy dx actually equals. It equals negative x over y. So this dy dx, I'm gonna replace it with negative x all over y. And it's still over y squared. So I'll multiply that out. <clears throat> so negative y minus x squared over y over y squared. And I still need to keep simpl simplifying because I can't leave a fraction within a fraction. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by that common denominator uh, of just the y. So I can clear this little fraction out. So negative y squared minus x squared over y to the third. Now, second derivatives are notorious uh, with implicit differentiation, at least, uh, for the original function to be substituted in at the very end. So like if I took a negative out of that quantity on top, I've got y squared plus x squared, which I've seen before. That's the original equation right there x squared plus y squared is equal to eight. So this quantity I'm gonna replace with an eight. So it's just negative eight all over y to the third. Okay, so just check that at the end. Once you're done with you know, the simplifying out or sim the simplification process, look to see if your original equation is really there. Like, can you, really, can you substitute something in? And with second derivatives in this process, Chances are the answer is going to be yes. Okay. Switch inks because that one's kind of running out. All right. This last part is on um, logarithmic differentiation. So it's going to be a little bit different because um, we're going <laughs> to throw in a logarithm, uh, hence the name. So this right here, like this derivative, like it would be possible, but it not a whole lot of fun. You'd have to use the chain rule, and then within the chain rule, you have to use the product rule. So there's a lot of stuff happening with this. So with some of them, you can simplify the process down by taking the natural log of both sides. So this ln of y, I can't really do anything with that. But over here, I can break this apart. So I can change the square root into a one half power, which then pulls down. And then the product will 
split into two different terms. So ln of, of x plus ln of sine of x. And so this is going to be a lot simpler to find a derivative as opposed to, to that. Um, but now that it's ln of y, it's no longer like y equals, so I have to use implicit differentiation to continue. So the derivative of ln of y is 1 over y times dy dx, which is equal to uh, the 1 half stays. Uh, the derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. The derivative of ln of sine x would be cosine over sine, which is cotangent. And then to finish it, uh, I'm just trying to solve for or find that dy dx. So this right here, this 1 over y, I'm just going to multiply by y over to the other side and get the dy dx. So we really have y over 2 times 1 over x plus cotangent of x. And then I'll lie, there's one more step. So this will finish it. Um, if you have a y in there, you, like, you know what y equals, so you can get everything in terms of x. So x, or root x sine x, all over 2 times the quantity of 1 over x plus cotangent of x. You can combine this into one fraction if you wanted to and then multiply it in. Uh, nothing would simplify if you did that, so you might as well just leave it alone and make it a little bit less complicated for yourself. Okay, let's try this last example here. Now this one, you would have to use this method because no other technique would apply uh, to this derivative because you have a variable as the base and also the exponent. So we do have no rule that accounts for that. So let's take the natural log of both sides. And I'm still gonna use my log properties because I can take this x plus 1, this exponent, and pull it down. And now I can take the derivative, so 1 over y times dy dx is equal to, uh, the product rule is going to apply here. Um, even if I distributed the ln of x across, you'd still have to use the product rule in there. Um, so the derivative of x plus 1 is 1 times ln of x plus uh, the derivative of 1 over x, or ln of x is 1 over x times x plus 1. So let's clean that up a little bit before we get the dy dx by itself, just so it's not so messy. So ln of x and this guy, let's go ahead and distribute that one across because that would just be 1 plus 1 over x. So swing the y over, multiply it out. And then switch the y back into terms of x. So your dy dx is going to equal uh, x to the x plus 1 times the quantity ln of x plus 1 plus 1 over x. And you can leave this the way it is. You can distribute this across um, kind of up to you as to what you want to do with it. All right, that is going to conclude section 3.5 and implicit differentiation. So try the homework problems uh, and email me if you have any questions.